It's often said that clothing maketh the man. If a person dresses in a beautiful way, in a presentable way, it can actually enhance your stature. And this is something that we see from this week's parasha, where Moshe is commanded by Hashem to make garments for honor and for splendor for his brother Aaron, the high priest, and the other Kohanim. And the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, wore eight beautiful garments. And many of these garments contained within them gold and turquoise and beautiful linen and pure wool. And each one is described in great, great detail. One of the garments that was worn by the high priest was called the me'il, the robe. And this was made out of entirely turquoise wool. And at the foot of this garment were tiny little pomegranates and bells that would ring, tinkle ever so delicately as the Kohen Gadol would walk into the Beit HaMikdash, into the sanctuary, into the Mishkan. And at the top of the Me'il was a hem, if you like, through which he would put his head. And the Torah there says something very interesting, that it had to be turned in over on itself, lo yikareya, so that it would not tear. And the simple understanding is that this is something that he put on and took off and put on and took off, and therefore it could be prone to tearing. So it had to be stitched in such a way that it would not tear. But the Talmud goes a little bit further, and it tells us that this is a negative commandment that one is not allowed to tear the robe of the Kohen Gadol. And of course the question is, why wouldn't one do that? Let's look at another garment of the Kohen Gadol called the Choshen, the breastplate. This was a beautiful square garment. It was made of precious materials, gold, and in it it had 12 precious stones. And on these stones was inscribed the names of the Jewish people. And Aaron HaKohen, Aaron the high priest and his descendants would wear it upon their chest. And the Torah says, Lo choshen, that the breastplate was not allowed to move away from his chest. It had to be tied down tightly. Again, a negative commandment. What is the meaning of this? Why do we have these two negative commandments? And in fact, there's a third negative commandment when it comes to the making of the Mishkan, the tabernacle. This time, not to do with an article of clothing, but one of the furnishings, the Arun HaKodesh, the Holy Ark. We're told that the Holy Ark had staves, sticks to carry it, that the Levi'im would lift up. But there is a mitzvah that even when the Arona Kodesh, the Holy Ark, is at rest, you are not allowed to remove these staves. They have to remain attached to the Ark at all times. A negative commandment. They cannot be removed. Again, what is the purpose for this? So we have these three negative commandments. Let's try to understand it. The first one is the me'il, the robe. Each one of the garments worn by the high priest came to atone for a particular sin. And in the case of the robe, the sin that it came to atone for was Lashon Hara, the evil tongue, slander and gossip. And that's why at the bottom it had little bells which ring and jingle. It was a garment that gave off sound. And the Torah says that that sound must be heard when the Kohen Gadol goes into the Kodesh, into the Holy. When is it appropriate, so to speak, to jingle, to speak? That's when you're going into holy things. And therefore it says that the top of the me'il, the top of the robe, which was called the pear, the mouth, lo yikareah, may not be torn open. The Torah is telling us, do not rip open your mouth to say something inappropriate. Rather say something good, something meaningful. Lift a person up. Learn Torah. Do a mitzvah with your mouth. But don't belittle other people. So that was the symbolism of the me'il. The symbolism of the breastplate, the breastplate was called Choshen Hamishpat, the breastplate of justice. And indeed it was something of an oracle. When the Jewish people couldn't decide, should they go to war, shouldn't they go to war, there was a special process that was involved where the king or the prophet would consult with the Aaron, with Aaron, the high priest, or whoever the Kohen Gadol was, and the breastplate would miraculously light up, the letters would light up and tell them what to do. It gave them the judgment. It represented judgment and justice. And the sin that it came for, to atone for was a sin in the miscarriage of justice. It represented justice. Now, where was the breastplate worn? It was worn over the chest, over the heart. And we are told that it shouldn't move away from the heart. Because what the Torah is saying is that when it comes to justice, justice has to be absolute. You cannot allow your emotions to overcome justice. Rabbi Akiva says to us in the Talmud, Ein merachamim in Badin. We cannot be compassionate in justice. If somebody has committed a crime and they did it with full intent, they have to suffer the consequences of the law. If the breastplate would be allowed to move away from the heart, 
The idea being is that sometimes the heart would be in control. We are told that there are times where we have to put our emotions aside and we have to follow the law. That's the symbolism of the breastplate. And now we come to the final negative commandment in the building of the Mishkan. This is the ark. Why is it that the staves, the stick of the ark, had to be in the ark the whole time? It was just for transportation. Why, when it came to rest in the Holy of Holies, did it have to remain there? What was the purpose of that? And the Holy Chofetz Chaim tells us something very, very beautiful. He says the ark, of course, represents Torah, Torah study, the Torah scholars. What do the staves, what do the sticks represent? Those who support, those who carry, those who help those who study Torah. Perhaps they can't study themselves, but they have money and they give their money towards supporting Torah schools and yeshivas. Well, one may think the Torah scholars are the true great ones. The people who assist them, that's a wonderful mitzvah, but they're not as great as the Torah scholars. The Chofetz Chaim says, no, that's not true. Because where do both of them end up being? In the Kodesh HaKadoshim, in the Holy of Holies. Even the sticks, which are only for transportation, must also be in the Holy of Holies. Because not only the Ark, which represents the Torah scholars, is holy, but even those who lift up and support the Torah scholars are holy. So therefore, every person has a role to play within the Jewish nation. Yisachar were the Torah scholars, and they learned, and they provided members for the Sanhedrin. But Zavulon, who were their partners, who went out to work and supported Yisachar in their learning endeavors, they were also holy people. So these are the three garments, or these are the three items in the Mishkan, about which the Torah gives us a negative commandment. We can now understand the symbolism. The Me'il, representing Lashon Hara, it's inappropriate. The chosh and mishpat, the breastplate, representing justice. Justice has to be firm. It has to be against the heart. It has to negate the heart. No emotions. And lastly, the sticks of the Aron HaKodesh must always remain in place because those who support the Torah are just as holy as those who study the Torah. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.